Uh, I just want to give you a warning before you invest your time into this video. This is not necessarily a guide as to how to fix your MX Master. You will be able to, to see how I fixed it. But there's a lot of dead space in this video where I just talk about certain thoughts that, you know, pop up in my mind when I'm doing stuff like this. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, it is clicking. Holy shit. So a couple of months ago, I released this uh, review video of the Logitech MX Master 3S. And in that video, I was really quite positive about it because yeah, I do generally really enjoy this mouse. Like a lot of the buttons are remapped to certain things I use in my editing software, whether that be DaVinci or Premiere. And yeah, I got some people in the comment section saying like, hey, don't buy this thing, like my mouse buttons are broken. Which at first I thought were like one of disgruntled customers. Until of course it happened to myself and it happened right outside of warranty period as well. So that was kind of annoying. Like I don't think companies are still busy with planned obsolescence and that kind of stuff, but it does feel that way sometimes because it didn't just happen on one of my MX masters. It actually happened on both the graphite version and the pale gray version within like two weeks of each other. So almost like it had a software update and it was like, you know, just make the mouse button stop working or something. And uh, yeah, today we're taking this thing apart, fixing it. So I hope to redirect a lot of the viewers from, from the review video to this video. I thought about like taking the review video down, but yeah, in the end I'm, I'm deciding this is maybe a better option. Just so you know that it's an issue. And I hope you didn't buy the mouse because of that video, but if you did, it is fixable. Uh, we just need to, yeah, take it apart and replace the buttons. So I did contact Logitech about this and actually asked them like, hey, do you, are you aware of it? And they were like, yeah, we're aware of it and we're, uh, we're, we're busy with it is what they told me, which is kind of strange. They must have known about this issue for at least a year now. And I don't know what they've been doing all that time, but it doesn't seem like they've fixed it. Because I did some research and it's not just me who's having this issue. There are like, tons of people who have this exact problem so it's a more wide scale yeah i'm guessing it was a mistake and they're now seeing the benefit of of that mistake because a lot of people are having to buy new ones so yeah today we're taking this thing apart we just need to remove six screws five of them are cross heads and the last one at the usb-c port is one of those starry pattern ones i'm not entirely sure what they're called a hex screw i think it's called a hex, hex screw and then you can just split this thing in two. It feels really wrong, as if there's another screw there, but it's actually just a latching mechanism. So you lift up the back and then level it again to where the front kind of loosens up and then you can take it off. And then there's a ribbon cable over there, which you can unlatch with a flathead screwdriver. I really like this design because it's really easy to put back together as well. And so here I'm also unscrewing the battery compartment as we want to unplug that battery like as quickly as possible. I, I don't think there's that big of a risk of a short circuit when the whole PCB is turned off at the bottom. But just to be safe, we want to get rid of that thing. And also you have to be careful with these batteries because they're uh, lithium ion, I think, and they do explode under certain scenarios. You'll remember back to the, to the Samsung days, you know, when we had exploding phones, that was fun. Like, I think the MX Master 3 does last quite a long time, but I'm generally kind of done with throwing out perfectly fine technology. Like, if I didn't have the time this week to fix this thing, both these mice would, would basically end up in the trash, and a lot of these components are still functioning, right? It's just the mouse button that's broken. So I'd really like to see hardware that's more repairable than this, you know, with, with hot swappable switches, for example. Which is totally possible, like the Razer Viper Mini, for example, has optical switches, which means there's a piece of light kind of shining through a gap in the switch. And that switch is basically a mechanical component that doesn't have any, you know, electronics in it whatsoever. But when that light is interfered with, or it doesn't reach the other side, then it clicks. And so I feel that is a way better design than this, because those can be removed really quite easily. You don't need a soldering iron at all. You just like, you know, you pop them off, like you can kind of see here. 
Now, of course, you need to take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm not actually, you know, qualified to talk about this stuff, but I'm just looking at it from, you know, somebody who doesn't know anything about this. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, this seems way better to me. But maybe there's something wrong with optical switches that I haven't thought about or, or something like that. But somebody will probably point that out in the com comments. So when those screws are all removed, we can, you know, take the entire PCB off. And I am really quite impressed by how this thing is designed, though. Like the designer who, who, who made this housing, for example, that is, you need some serious skill to achieve this. That looks really awesome. But the uh, on-off button is also really quite fragile, in my opinion. Like it's just a slider resting on an on-off button that is soldered directly onto the PCB. So if that, you know, if that breaks, then the entire mouse is gone. Or like this entire main board is basically gone. I'd rather see there's enough room in this thing to make an extra plug and make that go to a separate switch that you can replace with like a ribbon cable, for example. And here we're taking off that entire rotary encoder assembly just so that when we're soldering these buttons off, I don't accidentally damage something else. Now, if you're doing this yourself, I definitely recommend getting a proper soldering iron. But I was kind of burnt out from buying stuff this week. I've been busy with so many projects and then, you know, I just couldn't handle it anymore. I didn't want to buy a, a good soldering iron, so I used this one. But there is a, a really big chance that you burn out the board by using this. In this case, the switch popped off quite easily and yeah, it's a uh, six by six by seven point two millimeters. So if you're looking for a replacement switch, then you can search for those measurements. I saw this person on Reddit who replaced these switches on the Logitech MX Master Three to KL Silent. I'm not entirely sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which really inspired me to do this project and fix my own mouse because that really, you know, taught me this is possible and we can do this. Now, in my case, I wasn't exactly able to buy the proper switches, like the proper sizing. So I ended up buying some different ones and thought I'd just 3D print a little insert so that the mouse button would actually be able to click these. But in general, I just recommend going for the proper sizing because these buttons are also, you know, the actuation force required to press these are, is really quite high. And I didn't really realize that when ordering this. Uh, so it's a good indication of like, okay, this is possible. We're able to replace the switches on this mouse, but with these, it's not really usable. Like it requires so much force that you'll get mouse arm in like a week. <laughs> but I can give you some tips on, you know, how to get these things on, even if you did buy different switches. So I recommend snapping off some of the excess over there. So the ends, otherwise it's very difficult to get these things in. And you know, you, you shouldn't hold the soldering iron on the PCB for longer than one one second, really. So, yeah, this makes it a lot easier just to hold it in place and then solder it there and it snaps in and it's immediately stuck again, which is quite nice. I'm doing the same here for the other side. Now, it, you know, it is quite difficult to do this just by hand. Sometimes it's uh, nicer to have those little holding arm things. I'm sure there's other YouTubers who have done this and you know, made a, made this look way easier than I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, we got both the buttons on there and it seemed to be working quite nicely. It was just about here when I realized like, okay, the actuation force is quite high. Like I'm not entirely sure if this is gonna work. And I was also quite worried that the, the board was fried because I did hold the soldering iron on there quite a bit too long. So before putting it back together completely, just plugged everything in, turned it on and tested it out does not seem to be clicking. All oh, right, it does. Just not the... Oh, it is clicking. Holy shit. I was just on the wrong spot with my screen, so... And yeah, I was really quite surprised that it was working, which was kind of funny, really. I've been taking apart a lot of hardware, but just this one, I, I had my doubts about it or something, I don't know. But in the end, I uh, glued some of these little plastic pieces onto the original switches, just so that it would work when it's all put back together. I did take this thing apart quite a lot of times, so the entire enclosure now creaks, and the mouse button presses are really, really loud. 
So I'll definitely have to order some, you know, different like actual mouse button switches. If you have any suggestions on what I could improve, then definitely leave a comment and hopefully see you in the next one.